Did you probably notice? <coughs> yes, it was. Okay, please stand for the play. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Roll call. Let the record show all members present except the uh, Bill Wimmer sitting in for Jay Sherpler. We have a motion to approve the agenda. All right. Okay, motion and second to approve the agenda. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, agenda is approved. We have a motion to approve the minutes from November. No second. Not. Okay, any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, minutes are approved. The surveyor's report. My wife this month. Not an awful lot this month. Uh, I worked the corners of a Jack Sparks Oak uh, with the county of Jake. Uh, finished off all the uh, corners that I had, had to complete the ones either from the highway department or those that uh, we found for options with. Now, I took the dust a little bit about this. Probably 30 to 40 percent of the phone calls I get have to do with. Some of the unrecorded flats we have throughout the county. Um, it's a little bit complicated. I plan to have uh, some handouts for you next month and we can go over that a little bit. Uh, I'm kind of visual and I think I tried to explain it without that. That's all I have. Okay, any questions? Okay, uh, Register of Deeds Office. Everybody hear me okay? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, awesome. Uh, we had a very large sale happen the end of last month. It was a, a $4 million sale, so that was a nice transfer fee for Adams County, so we're pretty happy about that. As usual, things are slowing a slight bit um, compared to last year. Last year was kind of a boom, and so we're trying to catch up on some things. And then I will also be having my uh, first transportation project plan electronically recording um, sometime next week, probably from DOT. I just worked with Keith Calloway at the DOT to make that happen. We have not had any plats recorded electronically, even though we've had other documents, but plats are a little bit different um, game with that. And then I'm hoping that to see in the future that the county will be able to do all plats electronically recorded and we will not keep the full size plats at all because it is a cost to the cabinets and the envelopes and things like that. So we're progressing along quite nice with that. And other than that, my last day, um, I'm gonna be retiring. So my last day will be January 13th. So I'm working hard to get some things cleaned up and taken care of because um, as we all know, you know, we, things kind of go by the wayside for a bit on some other administrative type stuff. And I wanna update my handbook and things like that. And that is a governor appointed position. So we're hoping that the governor does make a decision in a timely manner because otherwise we'll be down to one person in the office. So that's kind of important that we make sure that we maintain a good level of service in the office. And that's all I have. Okay, thank you. Are there any questions for Jody? I don't see any hands, okay. Land information. Thank you. Land information, yes. Uh, so as of right now, we are just waiting from the state of Wisconsin to respond back to our next generation Title one grant that was submitted at the end of December or at the end of November um, and still waiting on a response from them. Uh, and then there was also the Wisconsin Land Information Program grant that is due at the end of the year in hopes that we are receiving $70,000 for a SIG grant. That's all. Okay. Thank you. Any questions? Okay, we'll enter the public hearing portion of the meeting. First application is for D Hobbs. The um, it is a rezone request for a parcel 1.94 acres from D1 Rural Business to R1 single family residential property located in northeast corner, southeast corner, section 18, township 19 north, range 5 east, known as lot 3, Spring Creek Landing, parcel 18 1300. 
703 Town of Monroe. Uh, the Town of Monroe did uh, table this request until their December meeting, and I would ask that this committee does the same. Yeah, I need a motion to table this result. Randy, to turn me on. Any discussion? Uh, rule call vote. Milner. Yes. JP. Yes. Sorry. You need to. Yes. Milner. Yes. Provolio. Yes. Dozel. Yes. Hanson. Yes. Nagarner. Yes. Okay. Motion table till December. Uh, mm -hmm. Next one. The next application is for Vaughn Road. It's a rezone request for a parcel of 2.07 acres from P1 Rural Business to R1 Single Family Residential on property located in the northeast quarter, southeast quarter, section 18, township 19 north, range 5 east, known as lot 4, Spring Creek Landing, parcel 18 1300 704, Town of Monroe. Uh, the Town of Monroe has tabled this request until their December meeting. I would request that this committee does the same. Need a motion to table. Randy and Jody. Any discussion? I just have one thing to say, <clears throat> Jody. Here, um, Vaughn's information is connected to the first one, so you might want to. They should both be listed in there. But they are, but it's it's connected to B, B houses. So for the town, I their emails. I'm not oh, even yeah. sure. Oh yeah, so. they tabled both of them, so they sent the same email. I just but it was from Vaughn. So I'm just just pointing that out. You might want to reconnect the emails that were on hers to his. Any further discussion? Yeah, hey, roll call vote. JP. Yes. Weimer. Weimer. Yes. Travolio. Yes. Nozzle. Yes. Nathan. Yes. Not Griner. Yes. Filner. Yes. Okay, table. The next one. <clears throat> The next application is for Gary and Linda Bula. It's a rezone request for a portion of a parcel, 15.5238 acres, from A135 exclusive ag with farmland preservation overlay to A115 exclusive ag with farmland preservation overlay at property working in the southeast quarter, southeast quarter, and the southwest quarter, southeast quarter. Section 33, Township 17 North, Range 6 East, parcel 2 1224 10, known as Lot 1 of CSM 20 North. 2946 and part of lot one CSM 1328 Town of Adams, address 1026 County Road E. Uh, the Town of Adams does not object to the request. They did that, heard that at the November 15th meeting, and then I also received correspondence from the highway department. Uh, the Adams County Highway Department has no concerns with the request. And I see no other correspondence on it. Okay, uh, Gary or Linda Bula, any comments? No, I have no comments. The reason for it is the 15.5 acres is we were we are reselling to our son Nathan who is here, and he has an approved loan for that purchase where the buildings are in the house. Okay. Any questions from the committee? Bill, the chair. Um, Will you explain the intent of this? I, I don't understand what the difference is, what they're requesting. The current zoning is A135, which means you cannot create a parcel less than 35 acres in size. And the total parcel was 70, 78. Um, in the middle of the almost 240s, there's a, a farm building, or all the farm buildings house, and then there's a pond in the back. They want to cut out 15, just over 15 acres. A115 allows for a minimum parcel size of 15 acres. So almost all the, the uses between the two districts are the same. It's just what is the allowable minimum lot size. Uh, so currently they would have to create 35 acre parcel. If this was approved, that would be a 15 acre parcel. Any other questions from the committee? Okay. Is there anyone out there that would like to speak in favor of this proposal? Is there anyone out there that wishes to speak against this proposal? Hearing none, it's up to the committee. 
I'll make a motion to approve. Motion to approve by Randy, second by John. Any further discussion? Seeing none, roll call vote. Trivolio. Yes. Dogal. Yes. Ethan. Yes. Knockreiner. Yes. Gilner. Yes. JB. Yes. Weimer. 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 Yes. <laughs> okay, thank you. This will have to be before the full county board on December 20th. That uh, is the end of the public hearings. Next topic, Dusty. All right, so the next item on the agenda is the initial review and discussion of the comprehensive zoning ordinance. Uh, a little background a couple years, a couple of winters ago, um, I reached out to all the towns and uh, to get their input, ideas on various topics. Uh, very, because of various office activities that didn't happen last winter, the ordinance, I find I did put together a draft. Um, at this point, there's a, an entire process that's going to take four to six months probably to go through. Um, this is essentially the beginning. Uh, at this point, we can go over it. What I'm mainly looking for from the committee is permission to send it out to the towns for their discussion, um, input, and get all that information back to me. Uh, this isn't a public hearing. Um, the main idea or the, the main gist of it today is in order to send out a draft ordinance, I feel it's important to have the committee's backing or blessing um, that we're at least heading in the right direction or that it's okay to start the revision process. Uh, this is the initial draft. I know there's been a number of or some questions about the process and it's something we're still working on perfecting the process. Um, I had given some thought that last month I could publish the process, um, but that's what I was going to go over today. Uh, one of the initial things is, so once it goes out to the towns, I would ask that the towns rip it apart, tell me what's right, tell me what's wrong. Over the course of a couple of months, we would I would compile that into an updated draft form. In the middle, uh, on January 10th, we are having a for lack of a better term, term, I'm calling it a zoning seminar. Uh, we're going to talk about other stuff besides the revisions, and that's open to all county board members, town officials, planning commission members, um, any department or uh, county staff that regularly interact with our department. Uh, again, that'll be at January 10th. You'll probably be getting invitations yet this week. And Part of that will be going over the revisions. We'll have, a, I'm hoping the towns have an opportunity to at least have two town meetings on this. Uh, come back to the committee. We can decide whether we want to do a public hearing or not. Tentatively, I have that, I guess, back in my head as March 3rd. If all goes well, then the county board would act on it. If approved, um, there's, there's a state statute process that also is in play here. If the county board approves it, it then goes to the town boards, and a majority of the town boards do have to approve it in order for it to take effect, even if the county board approves it. Um, my goal is not to get a simple majority. Um, by the time we go through this process, I want all the town boards happy. Um, so at this point, if you want me to go through it, kind of hit on some of the highlights. Um, or I'm guessing at this point you've all reviewed it. If you want to just give me permission to send it out to the towns uh, so they can start reviewing it and going through it. Anybody want to start? I'd like to start. Go ahead. <laughs> Um, did you say you compiled information from the towns already? Yep, uh, the winter of 20, 20 and 21, um, I'd sent out questions about accessory structures, how to regulate them, uh, camping ordinance. Uh, there was a number, it was, it was more of a, I guess a survey is the best way to put it, but um, Mostly open-ended questions, you know, are, 
do you want tighter restrictions on these things? You know, what about this possible uh, solution? Um, the results um, were kind of across the board, so it was difficult putting something together. Um, and it, a number of the questions that did come up at that time or responses I got were, well, we like this if this is also in the ordinance. So it, it's tough to do an ordinance that way by putting it into ordinance form. Now you can see what's at least in there for now, but that doesn't mean it can't change. So can you provide the committee with those results from yep. the survey? I can do that. I will email those out either after the meeting or tomorrow. I think, Dusty, I think that's where our uh, camping uh, septic ordinance came out of was those surveys, correct? Yep, that was part of it. Yep, that was kind of a... Yeah, it wasn't... Camping was a big part of that conversation, um, and, and one of the concerns that did come out of that was what are people doing with their waste? Yeah. Julie. I'm just curious on the timelines that you mentioned. Are those firm timelines? No. Okay, so so there aren't any deadlines that we're meeting. No. I, ideally, when you're working with a zoning ordinance, it's nice to have in place before the start of a building season. Um, but my bigger goal is to make sure everybody's on board with it, as opposed to meeting a arbitrary deadline. I feel a lot of changes I'd recommend. Well, so I, I just want to put that out there. I, I'm just wondering if everyone is in the same boat and, and if they are, um, do we do we postpone moving this forward? Because I think it would be wasting the town's efforts to, to review if there's potential for change. But Jody, Jody on, wouldn't we be better off to take it back to the towns as it is and let them give you input what they're thinking? Because ultimately it's the towns that are going to approve it in the end, not you or I. I agree, but it's coming before the committee first, is my understanding with what you just said. We're, we're going to committee, you're yeah. looking for input or a blessing, then you're going to be passing it on to the town, and then the town is going to also have the review process. And then it'll be coming back. So it isn't, don't we get the first opportunity? I guess is my my question. Well, I mean, it is here to have a discussion. I mean, that's, that's what the agenda item is. You can't approve it or deny it today. That's not an option. Um, we, I mean, we do have to have a public hearing before that could ever happen. And that's someplace off on the horizon. Uh, my thought is, is it, it, as far as changes go, that would start with the towns. That was my thought process. Today, I'm looking for permission to give it to the towns. Um, and, and, and the example that I, I would give is, let's just say that I, I wrote this ordinance and, or made the changes in the ordinance and, and made um, gentlemen's clubs permitted in every district and encouraged their use. What I put in that ordinance is also reflective of this committee and the, and the county as a whole. And my, my concern would be is that I do that without you guys even knowing about it or having any say in it, goes out to the, the communities and, and that's what they're seeing as coming from this committee and county. For the record, I didn't do that in the ordinance. Um, and that's where, I mean, as long as you feel it's it's, along the lines of what we're trying to do, knowing that there's gonna be a thousand changes before the end. Um, that's where I would ask, you know, nothing too out of line, details may change. Let's let the towns weigh in um, because there is a lot of them, you know, that I, I, and that's the tough part in any of this ordinance is trying to, satisfy many different aspects or many different uh, points of view. So just sticking this out there for what it's worth. 
the town board meetings are not necessarily well attended. So I hear a lot of communication from my constituents that perhaps don't come to the town board meetings. My thought is that it's not a bad idea to look at some of the changes that, that I noticed so that we're not in this full revolving cycle where, okay, now we have these changes, how would the town feel about that? That's where I am. And I did ask um, Corporation Council if this would be the opportunity to add or remove things from the ordinance. And he did say yes. Mm -hmm. So I understand where Randy's coming from, but I also think we should probably either address some things or give everybody a longer opportunity to really review if that's the way that we can work this, that the committee gets to deal with it first. Just me. They had what 400 pages start going to it. Um, I don't know where to go from here. I mean, that's it. I guess at this point, it's up to the committee. How yeah. you how you want to proceed? Yeah, I, I've got a couple questions. No one has anybody other than you on the end that works in the county reviewed or approved any of the adjustments or changes that you made? No. This is just your take on this is the initial, very initial draft. There's there's a review process that happens once we have because I I, I know it's going to change. Right. Um another thought. If we want to get the, the town's uh input, can we just set up the blank code that it currently is and say tell us what you don't like or what you think isn't fair or isn't representative? versus having our take on it already. And that's, for the most part, what I did two winters ago. I didn't send out the blank column. Um, it's been in place for a number of years. I, I, I think a lot of people are familiar with it, but I did ask specific questions of all. And, and you'll see the, I mean, the, the questions I ask when I give those to you. Um, you know, should we limit the number of campers? Should we limit? Time should we? How do we deal with the septic? How about accessory structures? So I think, and that's what I'm looking for. Fair enough. I think one of the things that might be beneficial is if we um, spell out the process. So add that to public notice exactly what that process looks like, with at least the tentative dates, so people don't feel like we're trying to slide something past them or anything along those lines. It's all open, transparent for. Let's see kind of the timelines and the things that have to happen. And then um, before I would be comfortable saying that I think we should send this out to the towns, I, I would like to see the survey that you sent out and those responses to see if this fits within the lines of, of what those, the feedback has been, I guess, if that makes sense. Um, so I really think that we need to push any decision back up a month or until the next meeting to before we make a decision on whether or not we send it out to the town um, to get a better idea of, of what the feedback has been. Uh, because a lot of these things happen prior to most of us being in position in the first place um, and making sure that it's a transparent process for the community so that they don't feel like we're trying to sneak something past them. Would that apply to all of these discussions? I think it fits for all three of them. Um, the other, the, the next two are very different topics. I guess I would, I mean, if, you're, if we go that route, let's only do that for the first ones, at least for now. Jody? Um, just an observation. I, I think with the holidays coming, uh, what I would recommend is what John is actually saying is yes, I would go with what he says, but I think I would go until February just so that we would get through the holiday cycle. And I'd be fine with all three. I mean, the shoreline one is, is pretty long in the tooth also. The tourist grooming isn't, but. I guess my 
only response to that would be is I'd rather have it in the time. I mean, I guess I'd like to get in the hands of the town as soon as possible. Um, the results of the survey, you'll get those. Um, town boards change also. And if a town said a certain thing and it, it didn't end up in the ordinance, when they have a chance to review this, we'll hear about that at that time. Um, I guess I would just rather see it in the hands of the towns over the next couple of monthly meetings for them. Randy, I'd like to get it in. I'd like to get it in town's hands sooner too, because this is our slow time of the year on the town level. We're through our budget process. We don't really have any rezones coming up in January, for example. Ours will start more into the March and April. So we've got more time to deal with it because they are going to be some lengthy discussions. So I would rather get it into the town's hands at using mine as an example sooner. I don't know why, if, if we can get the surveys out so that they apparently, everybody sees what was thought of two years ago. And I remember just like what you said, it was a basic survey that you had good response to, and it was all over the board. Um, I just didn't see it sooner. Yeah. The only concern that I have with that is, and you know, I have no idea what the surveys say or what information was out there. It's not that I distrust anyone, but as you said earlier, this represents all of us collectively. And even though I've read it, I can't tell you that I could completely digested it and comprehended every sentence in the 300 plus pages of, of documents. <laughs> um, I would just like to have a better understanding of what that is before it goes public. I mean, not that it's not public already, I wish we were okay. it, but. So would you be up for tabling it for one month? That would be my recommendation. I need a motion. I'll make that motion. Yeah. Motion by Provenio, second by John, to table this discussion for one month. Roll call vote. No vote. Do we have, do we have a discussion on that first? <clears throat> Mr. Chair? We'll go ahead and discuss. Well, it seems to me speed is not the essence of what we should be doing here. Thoroughness is what we should be looking at. If it comes up next month and we're not ready, we can table it again. But last, uh, I just had I want to direct a question to Justin. Um, all the green lines are things that you went through and decided to eliminate. Is that uh, mine? Is to add. To add? To add. See, I. I think we should look at it before the hands of man <laughs> go, go through this thing. And I think this committee should actually take this uh, line by line. It doesn't have to be done in, in, a, in one meeting. It can take a certain amount of it, go through it, find out how these zones, these zones are, are like a three ring circus. I mean, it just, there's so much overlay and, and things that I would think that it would be very difficult for you to even enforce it. And I would rather see a thorough line by line go through it. Maybe, you know, as long as it takes. Speed isn't the important thing here. It's getting it right. And I would think before this would go out that um, this committee would hopefully get a chance to go through it. Okay, yeah, Mr. Warren, the only thing I've got to say to that is my understanding is we're going to cut this. We're cutting a lot of stuff out that is being enforced now. We're going to go from 101 pages down to maybe what 80? 70, 70 something. Or, yeah. So we are really getting rid of a bunch of stuff. We're not adding. We're adding, but we're still getting rid of. Does everybody on the committee understand that? I, I couldn't even read between the green lines. And I, I guess I don't know. Green lines. I'm, I mean, I, I think it's just that how your computer is set up. Mine, if there was something deleted, there's a line through the actual words. And then there was, on mine, it's any blue that doesn't have a line through it is an addition or at least move from another section. And then um, I'm, 
the version we published uh, does have comments on the side for every change that we use. Um, and I will go through it. Not today. We got a motion on the floor. Jody? So, per what Randy and, and Bill are talking about, I, I think there's a diminished line page number because you've condensed some of the repeated setbacks and, and whatnot. I don't think that's the issue. The, the issue is the content. And I guess I don't mind pushing it off for a, a month, but eventually I think we need to address what us as a committee sees that's necessary in this these documents and, and then pass it on. So again, I think we should have the first take at it and next month is fine, but thank you. Okay, the motion on the floor. Roll call vote. Winner. The, the motion is to table. Table one month, yes. Provolio. Yes. Noble. Yes. Season. Yes. Nockreiner. Yes. Gilner. Yes. Chafee. Yes. Okay, table till next month, this discussion. Next one is the tourist rooming house ordinance. All right, so another initial review. Uh, the process for this is, is a bit different. This is a zoning ordinance. Uh, when it comes, to, if the committee is satisfied with what's in here, um, next month I do anticipate holding a public hearing, uh, published accordingly. The it, it's a fairly short ordinance at nine pages. Um, I think everybody has it, or I guess they can. Okay. Yes. Um, so yes, nine page ordinance, you'll see kind of that same thing. Um, red slash through is deleted. Um, blue underline is added. That one is currently there's an impression by people that are operating rentals. Um, or when we initially talked to them that all the operations have have to be done by a resident agent. That's not the case. Um, an owner can do that. So we cleared up that. Uh, we added one definition, name of this committee. And that was informational from when it was originally adopted. Uh, the provision shall apply in all municipalities or shall not apply in all the in municipalities which adopt a tourist rooming house ordinance. Um, as of November 18th, the town of Rome and the town of Lincoln um, have adopted such ordinances, so this ordinance does not apply in those towns. Slow it down, not a lot of changes, not a lot of changes. Uh, my title changed. I am no longer the zoning administrator. I'm the director of uh, zoning and land conservation, so that was corrected in there. We are, for a little background, we're at about just under 200 of these licensed throughout the county. Um, under this ordinance, that does not include, like I said, the town of Lincoln or the town of Rome. Um, we have yet to issue one conditionally. Uh, so that was approved. There's really not a lot of reason for that. If they can't obtain their uh, license through the health department, I don't see a good reason why we should issue a license either. The biggest change and the primary reason this is before the committee is to clear up some of the language on um, hearing requests. There's two different sections in the ordinance that somewhat conflict and could be read differently. Uh, like I said, we've issued just under 200 of these. We have yet to have a public hearing on any of them. We have been requested a number of times, but the way I interpret this is you need to be able to demonstrate that they're in violation of this ordinance before a hearing can be granted. Um, not everybody agrees with that interpretation. Many people do. 
So what I did was just cleaned up the language and basically said, the hearing's not happening. I didn't put it in such language, but B, you can see I added that. Um, I notify all the neighbors. I speak to, I spoke to a couple thousand people about this throughout all those permits or licenses. Uh, you have the information, how many uh, unit or what the maximum maximum occupancy of the unit is, the address. Um, we don't put it on the website, but we do notify everybody within 500 feet. At that point, we do wait 15 days. And um, then once they are so satisfied the entire ordinance, we do issue the license to them. Um, so the deletions there are to clear up the public hearing portion. Department became division when their departments combined. Everything on there is just changing my title. And same on that page. And we don't, I just cleaned up the language on that paragraph B, rezoning fees. It's if there happens and need to be a rezoning, which we have yet to have that case. Um, it would be obvious that you'd have to pay for every zone, and that's the that's the other half of the public hearing portion, and that was why it was confusing because it was located in two different spots. Um, if you read what was deleted there, that's actually the paragraph B above that was added. And I guess at this point, I'm looking for. Permission to bring it to public hearing next one. Yeah. So along the lines of what we we're talking about earlier, the uh, questions. So I've got a few on this particular one. It's a smaller one. Um, section three, bed and breakfast are exempt. Why? From this ordinance, they zoning still applies to them whether they can do it or not, and they are licensed by the health department. Um, typically, this ordinance that it's very common to many other church rooming house ordinances. Don't apply to bed and breakfasts or resorts, hotels. Um, most of the time they do have their own set of rules. Okay. In section 13, it says late fees double. Yes. Double what? I just need to spell it out. Section 13 oh. number four. So whatever, if they started renting prior to obtaining a license, the initial permit application fee would double. Okay. Whatever, whatever the applicable fee <clears throat> would be, would double. And that's very standard in um, pretty much all the ordinances I under our department. The uh, in here too, you also have. Uh, Section 14, section 15. Starts the paragraph starts with provision um, and finds uh, addition to cost of, of prosecution each day of violation. Is yes, that, and that's so that's standard in all of our ordinances. <clears throat> um, doesn't generally work out that way, but that is an option if we ended up in court. Uh, this would allow the, the court to uh, apply for each day in violation. And then if my license was revoked, I have to wait two years to reapply. Yes, and that is a that is one of the reasons that in three years of this ordinance, I've had one complaint. Uh, when I go out and do my initial inspection, I make sure that the owner of the property is extremely well aware of that. Every time they rent their house out, their license is on the line and they know that. And it is a great incentive for them to operate these in a manner. My goal for the entire project is that the neighbors never know what's happening. Um, other than I notify them by mail, but um, and that two-year deterrence is 
a big deal. I'm just concerned that it would potentially cause us to not enforce because it would bankrupt the entity or individual that was involved in that. And that's why I make sure they're they're aware of it because I mean it is it, it's a huge deal. Um, some questions. The change in title from director to zoning administrator. Are there any uh, <coughs> inherent uh, changes in in what your capacity is? No. It's the same thing. Okay. I mean, it became director when I when the departments combined. Okay. Um, hold on. Uh, under hardship, uh, C number two, enjoyment of other property in the neighborhood. Rather subjective, isn't it? My goal for the program is that a neighbor will never know this is happening. Okay. I would think that it would give a lot of um, power to a neighbor that did not want this in their neighborhood to begin with to find ways to not enjoy. Mm -hmm. So I guess, I guess to me, um, that's walking a fine line. And that's been in there for the whole time. I um, agree. And like I said, with just under 200 of these, I have yeah, received one complaint. Can we run this by court counsel just to see? Because I, I mean, when it comes to being subjective, I would rather I would rather know that you have a legal leg to stand on. Well, and court counsel did review this one. Was that what page are you on? I'm on um, three three five hyphen twelve hardship uh, section C sub two. Right, and that's so under that section, if somebody's applying for a hardship, which nobody ever has, that's something this committee would take into account if by granting the hardship expect, exception for whatever part they're requesting. Okay. That would be up to the committee. Um, none of that has changed. That's all been in the original ordinance and court council, county manager, and the county board all review and approved this three years ago. I still would rather have some. Well, again, I am just requesting to take this to public hearing. Right. And well, at that point, court counsel and county manager would both review it and sign off on it before it goes to county board. Yeah, before it would go to county board. Okay. Um, another question. This applies to tourist rooming houses that are under what time frame for, for rentals? 29 days or less. Okay, so less than 30. Yep. Anything more than 30 or more falls under nothing. Nothing. Okay. And um, uh, I can't say that. Nothing through us. Um, if you're renting a house, I believe the, there is some permit. The health department does get involved in some of that okay. um, for rentals. And just, I mean, if I go and rent a house for a year or an apartment or whatever, that's. Whatever rules would apply, that's okay. That apply that point. Um, and then when when we know that Lincoln, I think, and Rome have their own, does it mean that uh, a municipality can't come in and say later they wish to with this sure. as of date? So so they can. Okay, yeah. so it's it's open ended. All right, I just want to make sure that too. Okay, I think that's it. Okay. I am um, just a little unclear, Dustin. You, in the permitting process, you added notifying the neighbors. No, nope, that's and always been in there. It has been. Yeah. Okay. And the 15 days is uh, just a rule of thumb, or is that <laughs> also? the 15 days it allows time for slow mail opportunity yeah. to you know to contact me? Some of these notices that we do send out. I'll send out 50, 60 for any given house or property. And I may get 15, 20 calls asking questions, making sure that they know who they can contact. And and I think that's good. I guess my point is though is 
should it state well, the the time we can get a new director and maybe he thinks three days is plenty it does does it um now i'm on the spot and i have to find that paragraph Of course, on the spot, I can't find it. Yeah. Um, I'll make sure you have to read on my phone. <laughs> Next one. I need a motion to allow Dusty to set this to uh, set up a public hearing for this rooming house ordinance. So moved. Randy? Second. Second or second? Any further discussion, Bill? Can I ask one more question? I'm not quite up to speed on that. So okay. I'll Joey. Okay. The, um, uh, hold on. I had it, but you're flipping through things. And so now I'm. Oh, sorry. No, no, that's okay. Here, you go ahead and flip, and I'll, I'll go back to here. The Mr. Resident Karen. Agent, the resident agent, 25 miles. Was that our decision or was that? state mandate nothing in this ordinance is state mandate we don't have to have this ordinance we can let them fly this ordinance um is becoming somewhat standard throughout the state um but that's at a municipality's choosing um and the ones that do have a resident agent requirement usually 25 miles is the seems to be the standard number Okay, now, now I'm a little concerned because when we first had this come to us, we were told that we needed to have this in place because of the state. And you are saying we do not need to have this in place. What I state changed the rules. No, nope. well, yes, they do. We couldn't deny it. Right. So there has to be some rules under which we allow it. We can't deny it, but then if we didn't have this in place, it would just follow debt cap. Or, or whatever at the state level, correct? Right. We're putting on our own spin. Right. Previously, so three years ago, um, these were all supposed to be adopt, uh, go through the conditional use process. Uh, because of the way the state changed the statutes saying that municipality can't prohibit these, um, it essentially makes the conditional use process pointless because you can't deny it anyway. Instead of every single applicant going through and possibly getting a different set of conditions, put it in ordinance form to handle that situation. We could get rid of the ordinance, at which point there's no process for complaints about these. Um, no rules or regulations at all about that. But it is not a state mandate that we have this ordinance. And uh, state health department, or this is <clears throat> the, the license through that cap that's issued by the health department looks at very specific things. For example, they they don't care if room tax is getting paid. There is a provision in here that you don't get your license unless the town is satisfied that um, you've paid your room tax during the initial process and the re, uh, renewal the town treasurer would need to sign off on it. Without that signature, I won't issue a license. Um, the health department doesn't have that option to do, to look at all the other components. Randy? Well, jo just, I don't know what, remember when Jody came on, but we were doing numerous rezoning or conditional uses every month. It was driving us crazy. We were spending more time doing that because we'd have to go through the list of 25 things and pick one specific to that property that everybody could agree to. And 
since we went into this, as Dusty said, our township has not had one complaint on renting out short term rental. Before that, it was all the time. So it's been a great thing for our township. Yeah. What's the rest of the process look like? Is it similar to the first ordinance where it has multiple steps and layers and all that? No. Um, because this is a licensing ordinance, it, it's not a zoning ordinance. Um, it, it does not require town approval, it does require county board approval. Um, we do have to have a public hearing anytime you change any ordinance. Um, you know, I, I, it's necessary. Um, so moving forward from here, it would be on the agenda again next month as a public hearing gets published in the paper for two weeks, similar to uh, the re a rezoning request. Um, at that point, you know, the, the public can certainly weigh in, they can weigh in ahead of time. The, um, and then the committee would vote to move it on to the county board. Thank you. Okay, motion on the floor to allow Dusty to set up a public hearing. Roll call. Season. Yes. Not Greiner. Yes. Gilner. Yes. JV. Yes. Carbolio. Yes. No. Wimmer. Okay. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> That's your meeting. Next one. All right. The third and final one is the initial review and discussion of the Shoreline Wetland Habitat Protection Ordinance Revision. Um, the shoreline ordinance is um, a state mandated ordinance that uh, does apply within 300 feet of all rivers, streams, and creeks and 1,000 feet of a lake. The main change in here, again, cleaning up a little language, but about 95% of the entire change is removing the Conservancy District, uh, which I have been talking with this committee about for maybe a year now. Uh, in a nutshell, the reason I am proposing getting rid of it, the, the Conservancy District came about in the early 70s. It was a map from the DNR. It was applied throughout the county under Shoreline zoning. The, um, it's, it's one of four districts that apply in Shoreline zoning. There's also recreational residential. General Purpose, Shoreland Wetland, and then Conservancy. The Conservancy District is extremely restrictive. Um, essentially, you can't do anything except duck, uh, duck hunt. The, it's not, a little bit more than that, but not much. The, um, since the time that the Conservancy District was originally created, floodplain zoning has come into play. The Wetland District, or the Wetland, zoning district has come into play or come into existence. When the conservancy district was originally created, one of the ways that it was defined what it was is a lot of the same areas that have wetland or floodplain. At this point, seeing as we have more detailed maps on wetland mapping, we have floodplain maps handed down from FEMA. Uh, it, it makes the conservancy district a bit repetitive. The floodplain ordinance is a separate ordinance. There are times where there's areas that are mapped as conservancy and mapped as floodplain. Even if they rezone out of conservancy, they still have to deal with the floodplain. Uh, in this case, nothing would change except they wouldn't have to go through the rezone process uh, to remove themselves from the conservancy. Uh, a great example is we had an applicant last month that um, wanted to put, put an addition on the town hall. The whole property is mapped as conservancy. Property is high and dry, but for whatever reason, that when they originally did this back in the early 70s, it was, it was mapped that way. Um, the committee did approve it. In this case, the um, they would not have had to go through that process. Um, so that's that's the bulk of the change. Most of shoreline zoning is. Um, where do you find on what can and cannot be in there by the state? 
Uh, we have very few choices. Conservancy district is not common throughout the state. And uh, there is no requirement that we have. And I would ask again that we take this to public hearing for the next one. For the discussion, I need a motion to that effect. We'll make that motion. I'll second. Motion and second to take it to public hearing. Any further discussion? Seeing none, roll call. Wimmer. Yes. Nockreiner. Yes. Gilner. Yes. Chafee. Yes. Provolio. Yes. Dozel. Yes. Season. Yes. Okay. Next, we have a financial report. That's on there. Looking good. The, um, over building permits. This is, um, so we did find a new way to run these reports. So you'll notice, or maybe, I hope you noticed, there's actually two sets of reports. Um, as you scroll down, Here's starting. There starts the second report. Uh, we were able to get this. We were always a month behind when I gave these reports. Uh, the report was sent to us on, say, November 15th, and that would have been at the end of October. You guys don't see it until today in December. Uh, we are now able. So, this second report is current through the end of November. Um, you can see that. Over in sanitary and building and justice. We still have all of December left, but just a smidge behind that zone. Um, but overall, um, doing quite well. Okay. Questions? Permit report. All right. So, Same thing here. Um, the first one on there is, is through the end of October. Uh, the second one, moving forward, there will, will only be one. We have to play catch up on this month. Uh, so you can see the permit numbers. November was about nine permits ahead overall. A uh, big part of that was four additional building permits and three different three additional zoning permits. The total permits for the year, we are within 25 of last year. 25 over last year. Uh, pretty similar all the way down the line. The big change is the transfer containers, and that was because of the ordinance from the ordinance, the sanitary ordinance change from last year, um, dealing with campers. And then at the bottom, you'll see the revenue, and we are over where we were at this point last year. Any questions? Division update. Um, so one of the, uh, we are still, I was hoping to have already heard today and it did not happen. Um, we have extended a job offer to somebody uh, for the part-time position. I have not heard a response. The um, other, other than that, starting to catch up on paperwork and, um, Inspections are a little slower right now, which is expected in the winter, but um, there's plenty else to do. The uh, other big uh, So under project status report, uh, the main things we have on there is the online permitting and inspection scheduling. Uh, we're still working on that. Um, There's some questions about what our permitting or our, our permit tracking software is going to look like coming moving forward. We do offer online scheduling for inspections, try to cut down the number of phone calls to our office. We take about 150 or so. In, on a typical day and 
the second one on there is the revised comprehensive zoning ordinance that's been on there for a while and that's why we're here today um and those are my two for project status reports any questions public participation anybody have any questions yes sir what was the reason that you're going through this cleaning up of language you could say was there a person that ordered it or who that ordered it or did it originally from the um and i've been here almost four years um i talk to people on a regular basis and i Town, town members or town officials, citizens, there's a lot of concerns about a number of different things. Um, and ordinances are meant to, I guess my opinion is that they're meant to be reflective of current times. Uh, I wouldn't say any group or anything like that caused this to happen. The, if it was only for the ordinance language cleanup, I don't think we'd be here today. Um, the main things that I have heard repeatedly over the years is address camping and um, like say salvage items, those types of things. So I have a two part question. So you drive around the county here and you notice, you know, I'm new up here. And so there seems to be a lot of public discussion, I could say, about, I guess, potential hoarding or messy properties. And there seems to be no, from what I read in the paper and talk to people, and that's all hearsay, but there seems to be no teeth involved with ordinances or no teeth, timeline teeth or there seems to be a lot of net messy properties and I'm wondering if you just aren't looking for more things to have that you don't enforce. Laws, laws on the books that you have that you don't enforce just kind of make things more unenforceable. I'm just wondering if we aren't fighting off a lot. And there was something said there with hurry up as opposed to taking your time and getting it right with input and seeing there is no directive, no mandate, no real response to this. I'm just wondering where the hurry is coming from. The need for hurry. You know, you, you say it's gone on for two years. Uh, some of these hoarding things have been going on for generations and there's no teeth to it. I was in your office a while back and I'm just wondering, it worries me creating laws and regulations with no teeth, no enforcement, even, and, 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 and the expense of, you could say, getting rid of garbage or the willingness or the wanting to, or the availability of dumpsters at the dumps all makes me wondering if we're not passing laws that we have the ability to enforce or even or even the legality to enforce. It's just a thought. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? Yes, sir. Uh, those town participation forms for the comprehensive zoning review are, are those available to the public and see those surveys that you sent out? Yes. Just not sure on. I would get them to you. Um, Come downstairs. <laughs> it's not far from here. <laughs> yeah, I, I, yes, I, I can share those with anybody. I mean, they're, they're public records as far as I'm concerned. Can you email them? Would that work good? I can do that if you contact the office. Sure. It would be easier for you probably yeah. to send me scan in there and put it in place. Okay. Thank you. Okay, anybody else? Yes, I have a couple of questions. Go ahead. Uh, questions for Dustin. I'm uh, Josh Pestolsky here, uh, Supervisor in Newchester. And I'm wondering, we handle a lot of these ordinance changes on county board see every month. Since they're more related to that individual 
township, shouldn't we be letting the individual townships handle these ordinance changes rather than bring them to the board? And then they have to go back to the. It seems like the individual township knows more about these ordinance changes than we do at the board. And so, therefore, I, I should they be handling these? Right. Okay. Um, so they do. I mean, the process, once they apply through the county, the process does go through the town. If they deny it, there's a certain process that has to happen, as we all learned a year ago. Um, if it's approved, it moves out of the county. The reason it has to come through the county or through this committee and then and full county board, the maps that are attached to the zoning ordinance, where it says this property is zoned A135 in the case of say like uh, the rezone earlier, that is actually part of the ordinance. So it's a county, it's a county ordinance, it's county law. So it's only the county board that can change that law. So that's why, but they in general, the committee and the county board give a lot of weight to the town, uh, but because it is a county ordinance, ultimately it's the county that has to change that ordinance. Um, if the ordinance changes, uh, as I was talking an hour ago, the majority of the towns have to adopt that change at the end. The way the state statutes read is it's the majority of the towns affected by that. So in the case of how we're revising an ordinance, the, or the comprehensive zoning ordinance, that affects all the towns under county zone. So the majority have to in the case of say a Newchester re rezoning, that only affects the town of Newchester. That's why there's that whole process afterwards that you can actually come back and deny it. And then it doesn't take effect. Um, so the town in a rezoning carries on amazing amount of work. Right. I, I mean, it's to me, they should just be handling it exclusively, and then we're not handling it at the county board level. Right. I get what you're saying, but yeah, it, it is a county ordinance, so it has to come here. Okay. Thank you, Dustin. This is just a kind of a suggestion for the board. This is a big ordinance change, at least from what I'm seeing. And I understand you pushed it back for a month now. But we have an election cycle coming up too. So the boards are going to get in, and these members may go right out. There'll be no consequences for the actions they do. Is it? I, I would suggest that maybe you postpone sending it to the town board until after the election so the new elected officials can get active and work together. Thank you. Anybody else? Yes, I have a question. Yes, sir. Uh, <clears throat> park models and tiny homes. <clears throat> okay, there's quite a few of these things out there in the county already. Okay, so what happens to those units if this ordinance is passed on that? Do they have to remove them or what? The, the section where it says that park models and tiny homes aren't allowed um, other than in licensed campgrounds, uh, there is no change being made to that section. They currently aren't allowed. Okay, but what about the ones that are out there? Out there, place they're illegally. This doesn't change anything. They're still there illegally. I just haven't found them yet. Or they're in a town that's not under county zoning, which this ordinance doesn't apply. Okay. Um, and uh, occupation of campers. You can only occupy one for seven days. Is that correct? No. This new ordinance? Okay. Um, the occupation or whether you're using the camper or not doesn't matter. Um, and that's true under the way the ordinance is written today. Um, it's, it's whether the camper, excuse me, the camping unit is on the property. Um, under this ordinance, there are some change, or under that ordinance, um, there are some changes as to the limit on the number of days it can even be on the property. Um, but there are other, there are certain cases where that is the case, um, potentially a permit. Um, that number may change as we go, but it, it's not the occupancy of it, it's just being on the property. Okay. And 
some of this ag stuff that was that's being taken out, uh, grazing and uh, beekeeping. Uh, well, we're not this, evaluating uh, the ordinance at this point. Just uh, accepting comments. Okay. Anybody? Uh, else? What about? Okay. Well, I guess that's all I got then. I, Okay, thank you. Trying trying to read this stuff is like looking at stereo instructions. And what I, um, the one thing I offer to everybody, especially after, um, I guess at any point, that's what our our office is there for. Um, we're there on a daily basis, every day. Um, I am more than willing to sit down and I do with a number of town board members and planning commission members as it is now. Um, work through the ordinance, what's, what it says, what it means. Um, and I'm certainly more than willing to do that with these revisions also. Um, probably a, more of a, like a one-on-one -on -one format instead of in front of a committee or anything like that. Okay, uh, any correspondence? No. I, I've got one more question here. Well, hold on. Uh, actually live in the country and how many are out of this area? All county board members live in the county. Okay, and then how about the, the, the young, young gentleman was making those changes? Does he live in the county? I do not. And how can you, how can you realistically say that that tractor can't go down the road at 10 in the morning because it wakes me up? Or the manure truck can't go by my house because I can't get to my mailbox? You don't know what we go through all here. How can you make these changes? Why, why don't you take the manure truck through the middle of town? Reminds me, Brian. I'll tell you, it's a lot of fun. There's, I guess I don't. There's why don't you come out to our house and try to pull up, you know, block the road when, when, the, when they're putting manure on the fields early spring. Yeah, and this ordinance, all the examples you gave, this ordinance doesn't talk about that at all. Not the newer trucks, you're right. Or anything going down the road. That's right, it doesn't. But how can you change these ordinances when you don't even live in the county and, and get a real full feel of what we're going through all here? You, you can't. I don't care if you were elected or if you were appointed. You get a little off topic. Uh, correspondence now. Uh, next meeting date is January 4th. Committee members, don't leave until you sign the ordinance that we did pass and we adjourn. Thank you again.